welcome back to the channel of Ecoholics. So I'm here again presenting you a video on another theory of investment, which is neoclassical theory of investment. I've already done a video on Keynesian theory of investment. If you wish to see that video, please go to the link below in the description box. So neoclassical theory of investment is one important theory of investment. So neoclassical theory of investment says that investment is something which is going to take some time. It's not going to happen just over a period of one night or two nights. So the firms are always in desire to increase their capital stock. So according to this theory of investment, it is being said that how speedily the firms are trying to catch to their desired level of stock will determine the level of investment. If a firm wants to install five machines in their factory and if they desire to do it by the end of the year, the level of investment is going to be fast, it's going to be quick as compared to the case if they want to in install these five machines by the end of three years maybe. So how speedily they want to catch up to their desired level of stock is going to determine the level, the speed of their investment, right? So it means this theory of investment is somehow related to achieving that optimum level, that desired level of capital stock. So if you can find that desired level of capital stock, that what value of capital I want to achieve, I can find the speed of investment because the investment is again going to determine the trade cycles in the economy. So let us see, how can we find that desired level stock of capital? Before we directly jump to finding that desired level of capital stock, let us first understand that which all factors are going to determine the investment under this theory of investment, right? So the first we have factors determining investment over here. The first factor is marginal product of capital. The another is user cost of capital. So what are these? Marginal product of capital is nothing. It's just that increase in the total product, increase in the output of your industry, of your, you know, of your firm after using that additional unit of capital. So when I use one unit of capital, how much increase it is giving me in my output. So if by using the capital, if by using this new capital, I have been able to produce 100 units extra, then 100 units is the marginal product of capital. So whatever extra output you can produce by employing that one unit of additional capital, that is marginal product of capital, which is represented by MPK under this theory. After that, we have user cost of capital. Either we are purchasing capital or we are high renting the capital, right? We have to pay some kind of cost for using that capital. So let us say we are renting it. So we have to pay a rental price, real rental price, of course, which will be adjusted for the prices as well. So that is going to be my user cost of capital. So in an ideal situation, I always want, I would always want my MPK, the additional output that my capital is going to create to be greater than user cost of capital. But the thing is, if this is going to happen, I will be using more and more and more capital. I will be investing in more and more capital units. So this procedure will stop as soon as MPK will be equal to user cost. Because after this point, I know user cost might will be greater than the MPK because of certain reasons. So that is going to be the point where I am going to have my optimum level of desired stock. Now the thing is how we are going to get to this point, how we are going to solve for this. So to help you understand this, I would be taking an example of a very simple production function. Let us see. So let's say y is equal to a k raised to power alpha L raised to power 1 minus alpha. So what is going to be the MPK over here? MPK is nothing. It is the derivative of output with respect to capital. So I will be getting A alpha 
k alpha minus 1 l 1 minus alpha. Now next to this what I have I take a out. I take alpha out here over here. I can write this thing in this form k alpha since minus 1 power is left I can write it in the denominator because when I solve this to k if it goes above it is going to be minus 1 only then l 1 minus alpha. Now if you observe this thing have a look here if you observe this thing a k raised to power alpha l raised to power 1 minus alpha it is nothing it's just again the production function over here this thing is again my production function so can I write it alpha y upon k? Yes. So in simpler terms, this is my MPK. Now I need to equate my MPK to my real rental price. That is my user cost capital. So let me equate my MPK to user cost capital, which is my rental price divided by P. Why have I divided with P? Because when you divide it, with P, it converts to real variable, real rental price. So let me equate this alpha Y upon K equals to R upon P. So I need to find the optimum level of K, which I will be getting from here. So take K to the other side and take all the variables to this side. So I will be getting alpha P by R into Y. K star because this is the optimum level of capital. So it goes there and P by R is going to come here. As you can see here, if your output will increase, your capital will increase. If your now this is the inverse of real rental price. So if rental price is going to increase, your capital is going to come down in that case. So this is how we find out our optimum or desired level of stock under the neoclassical theory of investment. So if you want more such stuff on the other topics, please let us know in the comment section below. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you everyone.